Hey, this is Billy Rillage uh, with Calvary Chapel Magazine reporting from Nahadia, Israel. Um, I'm here with Dima and his family. Uh, they're pastoring a small group of people here and working uh, with the community here to try to build a church. And so it's been great to be here with them. And I want to thank them for hosting me while I've uh, been in this city. I've been in the uh, country for two weeks now, almost. And, uh, you know, I was in Tel Aviv for seven days. And in those seven days, there were nine rocket attacks. Uh, it's amazing uh, how, with, with so little of uh, the rockets actually piercing through the Iron Dome, uh, that there's a psychological damage that's happening to the people. Many people I spoke to, uh, they spoke of the silence uh, being a deafening uh, factor in their lives. Uh, many times I saw the bombs come through the night sky and blow up and then you hear the sounds of the loud booms and you just imagine children and their moms uh, either out in the streets and not having a place except maybe under the edge of a building to hide. It's, it's, a, it's such a frightening situation. And then you hear the reports like the other day where 11 soldiers lost their lives. You hear the, the uh, extraordinary story of a rescue uh, the other day, which will, I'm sure, be as brilliant as the one uh, that happened in Entebbe years ago. But at the end of the day, there is a, a violence, a psychological violence that's going on. Everyone feels and, and, and almost knows with some certainty that a time is coming, much worse than what we've seen so far. And it's building and it's just out there on the edge. And so people are tense. Uh, the streets are empty at times. And then all of a sudden the sirens go off. And once again, we remember why we're here. Here in Nahadia, uh, there is the sound, constant sound over the past few days of the artillery of the Israeli Defense Force bombing Hezbollah just over the mountain, not too far from here. You can actually see the smoke in the day right from where we're at. And so at the end of, you know, when we look at all of these things, this is a constant. You know, uh, we, we don't have the damage that we I thought would be here by news reports in the States. What we do have is a psychological, a spiritual warfare that's taking place. People's minds and their hearts wondering what's next. Is it going to be this all-out invasion? Will it be as ugly as what happened on October 7th? Or will this thing just constantly go on, this barrage that keeps everyone on edge? As businesses shut down, people are losing jobs, they're waiting in their homes, there's restrictions. Young men and, and children, it's, it's the same thing as COVID from being locked in. It's having a psychological effect on people, but it comes from a spiritual warfare. I'm not into the psychology of all this, but the one thing we are into is the fact that there are two kingdoms at war here, and it's the kingdom of God, and it's the kingdom of darkness. At the end of the day, that's what this is really all about. And the evil and the darkness of Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, it's, you know, it's spearheaded by satanic work through men who've lost all hope of having light in their life. So we wait tonight, we've had word that there should be uh, a rocket attack maybe in the next six to 10 minutes. And as we wait, you know, people, everyone who has this app will know that this is what's coming. And once again, we sit on edge. Hey, and yet last night or the night before we sat at the dinner table here on Dima's porch, having fellowship, we had dinner, we had dessert and coffee and all the time in the background, the bombs are going off. Uh, a probability that people are being killed. You know, it, it, it's, it's almost too much to think about the desensitizing that's taking place. Much like with the church living in the last moments of time and still going on in lukewarm attitudes. So, you know, we say pray for Israel because the actual bombs and the threat is right here. But it's a good time to pray for the church. It's a good time for us to rethink where we're at. It's a good time for those who are true Christians to recognize replacement theology is a heresy. And sometimes I think even the best of Christian churches at times, while they may not believe in replacement theology, they have a replacement attitude. Well, that's Israel. They were always in trouble in Old Testament times. They've always been in some kind of trouble due to arrogance and whatever, and that's simply not true. Whether we like it or not, whether we have an attitude about it or not, this is God's people in God's land. And we need to support in prayer. We need to support in pushing our politicians to maintain support for Israel. And we need to keep ourselves in a place where we know God is gonna send his King, our King Jesus. And when he comes this time, it's gonna be a whole new program. We need to be ready.
Uh, so this is Billy Rutledge signing off from Nadia, Israel. God bless.